On the afternoon of October 4th, 1957, crowds began to assemble in front of an Avro aircraft hangar at Malton, Ontario. First to arrive were reporters and cameramen, armed forces officers, and members of industry and government. Avro workers then began to stream out from the plant area and fill the tarmac until there were 10,000 people waiting expectantly on that sparkling fall afternoon. All turned their eyes toward the huge gold-colored curtains screening the entrance to the hangar. Mr. Fred T. Smy, president of Avro Aircraft Limited, followed by the Minister of National Defense, the Honorable George R. Perks, V.C., led the way onto the speaker's platform, followed by leaders of the armed forces and government and various officers of Avro Aircraft Limited. On a very special day, may I introduce the president of Avro Aircraft Limited, Mr. Fred T. Smart. Mr. Minister, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. It was a great privilege to welcome you here this afternoon on the occasion of moving the first Avro Arrow from the production line to the flight test hangar and to its first public viewing. We are very grateful to think that you've taken the time to be with us to celebrate this event. Notable among the distinguished group on the platform were Sir Roy Dobson, Chairman of the Board, A.V. Row Canada Limited, Crawford Gordon, President and General Manager, A.V. Row Canada Limited, the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Hugh L. Campbell, and Canada's pioneer airman, John D. McCurdy. Now, a few words about the airplane, which you're about to see shortly. The Avro Al, most of you know, is a twin engine long-range, day-night interceptor. It has a cruise too. It is a big, versatile aircraft. The loaded weight of the L is in the order of 30 tons. We feel that this airplane represents the substantial technical achievement, that it demonstrates the capability of Canadian technology and represents a significant contribution to the Western world. I cannot help but say how proud I am of the employees of Avro who have created what I think will become known as a great airplane. In conclusion, the company president paid tribute to the various Canadian government departments, to the Royal Canadian Air Force, and to the hundreds of suppliers across the nation who cooperated with the employees of Avro Aircraft in this interceptor's development. He then went on to introduce Air Marshal Hugh L. Campbell. Mr. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Mr. Smy. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to participate in today's ceremony. It marks significant progress in aviation. In particular, the era of development is a forward step in the field of Canadian military aviation. Air Marshal Campbell remarked that the planned performance of this aircraft is such that it can effectively deal with any likely bomber threat to this continent during the next decade. He endorsed the remarks of Mr. Smy and paid tribute to the vast number of Canadians everywhere who contributed their skills toward this project. 650 companies have been engaged in the design and manufacture of the 38,000 parts in the Avro Arrow. The Air Force Chief considered that the development of this aircraft had been an outstanding piece of cooperation between service and industrial agencies on an international level. To all of you, you who are engaged in the continuing task of this program, we wish you that peace and we shall follow your progress closely.
Fifty years ago today, that great Canadian pioneer, John McCurdy, who fortunately is here today, flew the Silver Dot, the first aircraft in Canada. In fact, it was the first heavier than airplane to fly in the British Commonwealth. History recognizes that event as the beginning of a Canadian air age. This event today marks another milestone, the production of the first Canadian supersonic aircraft. The Defence Minister pointed out that while present aircraft travel at supersonic speeds for only short periods of time, the Arrow has been designed to be truly supersonic. In closing, I would like once again to commend the efforts of all those who have contributed thus far to the development and production of this aircraft. Through your efforts, you are making a direct contribution to the defense of the free nations of the world, and so to the well-being of us all. I now have pleasure in unveiling Avro Arrow, Canada's first supersonic aircraft, a symbol of the new era of Canada in the air. will be taken to a flight test hangar for further exhaustive checking and the installation of specialized instrumentation prior to actual flight testing. When the Avro Arrow is put into squadron service, it will provide Canada with the most effective defense that human ingenuity can now devise.